When they run away and you can't clear them, and their formation rate exceeds the ability of the immune system to clear them, and they start poisoning the immune system, then they can spread everywhere. And this may be one of the reasons you see multimorbidity, for example. And speaking about senescent cells, so uh, for our uh, listeners that never heard about senescence, can you explain what is uh, what are senescent cells? Well, senescent cells were first reported by Len Hayflick and Moorhead back in 1961. In fact, Leonard Hayflick is still alive. He's in his late 90s. Um, so he um, and uh, Moorhead discovered that um, cells from humans or other animals with a backbone, but they studied human cells to begin with, have a limited number of times that they can divide before they stop dividing or until they die or whatever. Um, and they found that some cells, after repeatedly dividing them in cell culture, that's how they originally did the experiments. They were taking human lung cells and putting them in culture. Um, they found they could undergo a limited number of replications, and then, they, then their dividing time slowed down and down and down. They entered a state of what we call pre-senescence, when they only had a few divisions left to them. And then they entered a phase of senescence, where they just stopped dividing. Um, and if they hadn't died, they would, they would persist. In fact, they're resistant to dying. So senescent cells generally are larger than uh, normal cells. They have essentially irreversible loss of ability to divide. Um, and um, it was many years before um, uh, people um, realized that this isn't just a culture phenomenon, that these uh, cells are actually appearing in people. And so um, it, it turns out that um, senescent cells have important functions. Uh, having a limited number of times that a cell can divide puts a break on cancer development because cancers have, uh, they can divide over and over and over again. And that's the problem with them. They divide, cancer cells divide very quickly. Uh, senescent cells, it turns out many of them, well, virtually all of them have something that we call a senescence associated secretory phenotype, a long term, I'll just call it SASP, S A S B. And this means that they produce certain factors that can modify cells nearby and at a great distance. The nature of the things that senescent cells produce depends very much on the kind of cell that became senescent, how long it's been senescent, how the senescence was induced. Like, was it reduced by repeated division? Was it, uh, was it induced by mechanical stress? Was it induced because it's on the verge of becoming cancerous? Was it induced because there are high blood sugar levels or high insulin levels or an infection? That affects the nature of the things that senescent cells produce. And, but every senescent cell has a SAS, but the nature is very different. And you can find over a thousand fold differences in the things that they produce. But in other words, senescent cells have a, even though they're quite rare, in, even in people who've got, um, who are very elderly or who've been exposed to radiation or had chemotherapy that can induce senescence, they're quite rare, but they um, produce factors. And they're not just proteins and peptides. They produce all kinds of bioactive molecules. They produce things related to RNA and DNA that they release. They can have an in impact body-wide. And, so, and indeed, you can have senescent cells in one part of the body. They will affect all of the rest of the body if there are enough of them. So it's like an hormone. The cells are, in a way, an hormone. In, in the way that they behave, because they can influence different organs from a, so far far away? Yes. So they, they have what we call paracrine or local effects, and they have endocrine effects. Uh, and indeed, they can spread senescence. And senescent cells are normally only removed by the immune system. They're very, very resistant to dying. So there are certain cells in the immune system that, whose job it is to clear them. Uh, but if they accumulate because they can spread beyond a certain threshold, they begin to um, their rate of spread can exceed the ability of the immune system to clear them. And then indeed, they can start poisoning the immune system and then they can take off. But in people who have a good immune system, senescent cells have to form or you would get cancer. If you stop senescent cells from forming, you get cancer. Yeah. So but what happens is uh, these, these cancer harboring senescent cells get cleared by the immune system. So this is a defense against cancer.
And then other situations where they're necessary, uh, you know, is in um, uh, during embryonic development. So there's something called the mesonephros. That's sort of a weird version of a kidney that embryos have. They don't have a proper kidney. That has to, once the kidneys develop in the developing baby, the mesonephros has to be removed. And that's done through senescence. The placenta uh, contains a lot of senescent cells. And in the last five days of pregnancy, they produce the factors that drive the baby through the birth canal. And if there's a problem with the membrane between the placenta, which is on the fetal side, and the mother, senescent cells can spread to the mother, and this condition called preeclampsia can occur, where the mother gets high blood pressure and has problems with subsequent pregnancies and can get acceleration of age-related processes. So there are many, many situations where senescent cells are necessary, but if they persist, or if there are too many of them, they will cause uh, tremendous problems. We'll take an example of the elephant, for example. The elephant is a huge animal. Uh, they develop from one sperm and one egg. They have repeated cell divisions. They almost never die of cancer. Only around 2% of elephants die from cancer. And that's partly because they have accelerated formation of senescent cells. It, they form very quickly in response to any kind of cancerous damage. But their immune system is designed so they clear those senescent cells immediately. So they can live a very long time. The same with some whale species. They can live a very long time and they tend not to ever develop cancer. So senescent cells can be beneficial. But when they run away and you can't clear them and their formation rate exceeds the ability of the immune system to clear them and they start poisoning the immune system, then they can spread everywhere. And this may be one of the reasons you see multimorbidity, for example. Yeah, I was going to ask that question before. You said you can give treatment for our primary prevention hopefully someday maybe giving treatment for secondary prevention. Is this specifically what a secondary prevention being conditions that would be caused by those um, senolytic cells spreading? Well, um, the first trials are actually in people with serious diseases and disorders for which there are no good treatments that are linked to senescence because we're worried about what I was talking about before and that's risk-benefit ratio. So as you mentioned at the outset, the trials are underway for advanced Alzheimer's disease, stage two and three, or very advanced, what we call mild cognitive impairment, verging on Alzheimer's disease, or there for trials with people with advanced age-related osteoporosis, or there are trials for people with um, these childhood cancer survivors, for example, people who've had chemotherapy and radiation before the age of 10 for, say, uh, leukemias. Um, many of these people do well throughout the rest of their lives, but some of them, because radiation and chemotherapy can induce in us cells, some of them uh, develop an accelerated aging like state when they're 30 or 40. So St. Jude, uh, who we're working with, they follow everybody they've treated for the remainder of their lives. And we, we, they did the studies. We, we helped them. They found that this accelerated aging like state in 30 to 40 year olds um, who've had cancer treatment, and I'd emphasize it's not everybody that this happens to. It's a small minority. But they're dying at 30 and 40 of Alzheimer's disease, second unrelated cancers, diabetes, uh, osteoporosis, and they're frail and they look like they're 70 when they're 30 or 40. So the National Cancer Institute has funded a trial, for example, in those people to test senolytics versus placebo to see if we can help those people. There, similarly, a trial has just been funded in Los Angeles area um, to look at um, uh, accelerated aging-like states that can develop in adult cancer survivors. And there are trials occurring um, in the Netherlands um, looking at a, at a similar sort of thing. So the initial trials with senolytics are for very serious conditions. There have been some trials just completed for something we call macular degeneration. It's a form of blindness that's related to senescence. And there was actually some return of vision in that trial. Uh, there are trials underway for um, cancers because uh, you um, have to be able to form senescent cells to prevent cancers from developing. But once cancers have developed, uh, if after radiation and chemotherapy, cells can either be killed or they can enter a senescent state. If they enter a senescent state and they're not killed by the radiation and chemotherapy, they continue to undergo mutations and they can escape senescence and come back as even worse cancers that are chemotherapy and radiation treatment resistant. 
So we've got an emergency clinical trial about to begin for a terrible tumor called glioblastoma. It's a brain tumor, uh, stage four and stage five. And that would be sequencing uh, usual treatment for it, which is surgery, which sort of helps a little bit, but it's usually spread throughout the brain. Uh, radiation and temozolomide, which is a kind of chemotherapy which is given for it. Uh, we're, we're beginning to look at, can we prolong remission uh, by giving senolytics after those agents to try to get rid of cancer harboring senescent cells. And I predict there are going to be other kinds of cancer trials, most notably triple negative breast cancer and others that'll come along. So in other words, we're really starting in a lot of ways with senolytics with treatment trials. Yeah. And then it, we'll work backwards to secondary prevention and primary prevention. 